Hello, people of the internet. My name is Danilo Gondim, and welcome to the Independent Drawing. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about the story behind one of the greatest albums of Brazilian music ever conceived. An album that changed generations, influenced musicians, and is pretty fucking awesome. Getz and Gilberto, featuring Stan Getz, João Gilberto, and Antonio Carlos Jobim. This is one of the greatest albums in Brazilian history, and today I'm going to be talking about how this album came to life. It all started around the 1950s. Stan Getz was in Brazil as part of the military band, and while he was here, he got in contact with Bossa Nova. He was so interested by the genre that when he went back to the United States, he decided to make an entire Bossa Nova record. This one right here, Jazz Samba. And this record, it's not really Bossa Nova, like, this is a guy that is trying really hard to be Bossa Nova, and I give him props. He actually does succeed in some in some cases, but it just doesn't have that flavor, doesn't have that bossa nova understanding. Nevertheless, this album was a huge success, and so Getz, who was in the middle of a career slump, decided to invest in bossa nova. He made other two records under bossa nova names, which were relatively successful, but not nearly as successful as this one. While he was making his second record of the genre, he decided to invite the guy to create a bossa nova, Antonio Carlos Jobim, and João Gilberto. So Antonio Carlos Jobim and João Gilberto were invited by Getz to make an album with him, and it also helped that they had just performed an incredible show at Carmen Hall. I said that name wrong, it's that famous place where everyone plays it and it's awesome. Nevertheless, Brazilians played Bossa Nova there and showed the world the precision of Bossa Nova, and Getz decided to invite both of these musicians to play together an album. João Gilberto and Antonio Carlos Jobim were invited by Getz to do an album together. They accepted on the condition that they brought their own musicians, which meant that the album, which was supposed to be made with Americans, was made almost entirely with Brazilians. Almost. No, it was made entirely with Brazilians, with the exception of Getz. Among the personnel of the album, you have, of course, Stan Getz on the saxophone, uh, João Roberto on the guitar and vocals, uh, arrangements by Antonio Carlos Jobim, but you also have curious names such as Milton Banana, also known as the godfather of Bossa Nova drumming in the drums, and Chio Neto on the bass. But because he was in contract with another record company, he could not be credited on the record. Nevertheless, his influence is all over this record. And of course, you have Astro Gilberto, who would become a worldwide phenomenon with this record. So, the recording of the album was relatively simple and relatively fast. The album was recorded in two days. Two days. This guy made this masterpiece in two days. <laughs> How? The recording process of the record was relatively simple. Everyone played their instruments at the same time, in the same room. Everything that you hear in the album is as it was recorded. Before mixing, of course, but nevertheless. Although the process to record the album was relatively simple, uh, it wasn't a simple recording. That's because Getz and Gilberto were getting into fights constantly. And since Gilberto couldn't speak a word of English and Getz could not speak a word of Portuguese, their arguments were relatively fun, I think. The biggest concern that Gilberto had with Getz was the fact that Getz could not really understand the bossa nova sound. Gilberto would ask Getz to play his saxophone like he was whispering, and Getz would just would not get it. Which, if you have heard Jazz Samba, you kind of can see the point that Gilberto was trying to do and understand it. I cannot talk about this record without talking about its singles, The Girl From Ipanema and Corcovado. The Girl From Ipanema and Corcovado were both sung in English and in Portuguese. The reason is relatively simple. Creed Taylor, the producer of the record, decided that it would be great for the record to have English lyrics. And he was right. But the most interesting thing about those singles probably has to be as to Gilberto. There's many speculations on how did she get her start and how did she became the as to Gilberto. Some say that she was just serving coffee for the guys and then they decided to test it out. Some said that it was a miracle. That's not true. The truth is that Astro Gilberto has been trained as a singer ever since she married John Gilberto. And her being there was not a coincidence. Gilberto wanted Astrid in the record. So the reason why she sang in the record was because people wanted her to sing in the record. That's it. Nothing else. The record was finished in two days and then Craig Taylor, the producer, just put it in the drawer. 
Yeah. Yeah. This record, this masterpiece, stayed in the drawer of a recording company for months. Why? Because cheese. I don't know. Like, you have the formula of Coca-Cola and you wait months to release it? Jesus, man. You wanna know the strangest thing? Creed Taylor actually recorded some Bolsa Nova records after this one that went on to be huge successes. This one right here, Creed Taylor produced this one. And he knew the success that Bolsa Nova could be and yet he chose not to release that album, Get San Gilberto, immediately. After months of the record being the drawer, Creed Taylor decided to release the leading singles, The Girl From Ipanema and Cor Covado. He added them a little bit to be more radio friendly and released in small radios across the country. What happened then? Fire! Fire! I cannot stress this enough. People were obsessed with Girl From Ipanema and Cor Covado. The record sales boomed. Everyone was so impressed and so fascinated by this new sound, even Brazilians. And we have heard Girl From Ipanema, we have heard Corcovado before they were Girl From Ipanema and Corcovado. We were tired of these songs and then Astro Gilberto comes in and ah, musical war again. So after the huge success there was the single Street Taylor then decided to release the album in 1964. This album right here sold thousands of copies, only losing to the Beatles in the Billboard Top 100. This album won Grammys, it won awards, it won prestige, and made Getz, Gilberto, and Antonio Carlos Jobim into international stars, like they weren't already. Anyway, but still. This album completely said, this is Bossa Nova. This is the best that Bossa Nova can offer. And you know, it's Bossa Nova, so it's already a lot of good things. But this one right here, Fantastic. This album called like Wildfire, everyone and their mother had a copy of it and it helped launch the career of Antonio Carlos Obin and Don Gilberto internationally and it helped bring back the career of Stan Getz. Esther Gilberto was being invited by Quincy Jones to sing in soundtracks. She was also very soon offered her own record deal in a fantastic Bossa Nova album called Esther Gilberto that I wish that I had but I don't. And Getz and Gilberto were invited to play all over the world performing a highly successful European tour. Look, at the end of the day, there's nothing more that I can say about this record that has not already been said. Fantastic, phenomenal, game-changing, incredible, unskippable, you cannot skip any song in here, every song is amazing. And, you know, the song Girl from Ipanema, who has been recorded and re-recorded thousands of times. This is just a fantastic record. If you have not heard this thing, do yourself a favor. It's Bolsa Nova at its finest. This is a masterclass on the power of music without frontiers. An American guy decided to invite Brazilians to play Brazilian music. And the, the result's fantastic. I don't know what else to say. So, did you like this video? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Holy shit, I just copied the antenna hard right there. I'm gonna be trying to bring more behind the scenes of classic Brazilian music records. So, let me know if there's an album that you'd like to know more about. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.